आई एम डॉक्टर ऐश्वर्या लेट्स लर्न अबाउट सी टी इमेजिंग इन हेड इंजरी इन इमेजिंग वी हैव टू लुक फॉर टू इफेक्ट्स ऑफ हेड ट्रामा प्राइमरी इफेक्ट्स दैट आर डायरेक्टली ड्यू टू ट्रामा लाइक एक्स्ट्रा एक्सिल हेमरेज एक्स्ट्रा ड्यूरल हेमरेज सब ड्यूरल हेमरेज सब बारैक्नॉन हेमरेज एंड पैरन कैमल इंजरीज लाइक कंट्यूजन लैसरेशन ऑफ ब्रेन एंड स्कल एंड स्कैल्प इंजरीज द सेकेंडरी इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ट्रामा आर सेरेब्रल एडिमा हर्नीशन सिंड्रोम्स सेरेब्रल स्कीमिया ड्यू टू ट्रामा एंड वैस्क्युलर इंजरीज विच कैन बी प्राइमरी और अ सेकेंडरी इफेक्ट और नॉन कॉन्ट्रा सी टी ब्रेन वी कैन यूज थ्री डिफरेंट विंडोज टू विजुअलाइज थ्री डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर्स नैरो विंडो विद विंडो ऑफ एटी एंड विंडो लेवल फोर्टी इज यूज टू विजुअलाइज द ब्रेन पैरेंट कैमा अ वाइड विंडो विद अ विंडो विथ ऑफ वन फिफ्टी एंड विंडो लेवल ऑफ सेवेंटी फाइव इज यूज टू विजुअलाइज एक्स्ट्रा एक्सिल हेमरेज एंड दिस विंडो इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज सब ड्यूरल विंडो नेक्स्ट इज अ वाइडर विंडो सेटिंग्स इन विच द विंडो विथ विल बी टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड विंडो लेवल फिफ फाइव हंड्रेड यूज टू विजुअलाइज बोन्स एंड हैंड्स नोन एज बोन विंडो बेस्ड ऑन द लोकेशन वी कैन क्लासीफाई एक्स्ट्रा एक्सिल हिमरिज एज फॉलोज If the hemorrhage is outside the dura mater, it is called extra dural hemorrhage, which is between calvaria and dura mater. And if the hemorrhage is beneath the dura mater, between the dura mater and arachnoid, it's called as sub dural hemorrhage. If the hemorrhage is beneath the arachnoid, between the arachnoid and pia mater, it is called as sub arachnoid hemorrhage. Let's see each conditions one by one. Extra dural hemorrhage appears on CT like a hyperdense biconvex shaped collection which do not cross the sutures, but it can cross the midline at vertex. Ninety five percent is caused by arterial causes, where middle meningeal artery is the cause, and five percent are venous causes. They usually associated with skull fractures. Ominous sign of extra dural hemorrhage is when the swell sign is positive. Swell sign means low density areas are present between the hyperdense. collection or hematoma which suggests active bleeding is present and indications for surgical management of extra dural hemorrhage which we can see on ct are size more than 1.5 cm that is in maximum thickness active bleeding or impending herniation present checklist before reporting extra dural hemorrhage coronal ct reconstruction should be done to not to miss vertex edh bone window should be done and looked out for fractures do ct venography if fracture site is near any venous sinus coming to subdural hemorrhage it appears on ct as a crescentric hyperdense collection which may cross the sutures it may extend along the fax tentorium and floor of cranial fossa types of subdural hemorrhage is based on the duration of the bleed It is called hyperacute SCH when imaged within six hours. It appears as a heterogeneous or hypotense collection. Acute SCH is within six hours to three days, and it appears as a hypotense collection. And subacute SCH is when imaged within three days to three weeks. It can appear isotense or hypotense. In this image, we can see it appearing isotense to the underlying cortex. the grey and white matter junction is displaced and the sulcal spaces do not reach the inner calvaria chronic sth is after 3 weeks where the collection reaches near csf density acute on chronic sth is when there is a rebleed within the subdural hemorrhage and it shows a hematocrit level coming to traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage is more common than aneurysmal subarachnoid hemorrhage or a spontaneous sh they appear on imaging as linear sulcal hyperdensities along the site of injury they can be associated with other extra axial bleed or contusion more commonly hyperdensities are seen in superficial sulci whereas aneurysmal or spontaneous sh are more visualized in basal cisterns moving on to brain parenchymal injuries they can be contusions or lacerations they commonly involve gray matter and the contiguous white matter along the site of injury they are almost always associated with skull fractures and they show perilational edema 
associated skull and scalp injuries can be present in this case we can see a subgalial hematoma extending to preceptal space of the orbit and in the next case we can see scalp lacerations what we should look for when we find scalp injuries look for any foreign body in subcutaneous tissue and underlying fractures or bleed now in skull injuries we can find fractures there can be linear fracture which is undisplaced fracture in displaced fractures we can see a depressed fracture where the fracture fragment is displaced within the skull this can further injure the meninges or the underlying cortex of the brain parenchyma there can be elevated fractures where the fragment is displaced outside the calvaria diastosis fracture is the one which includes the suture and causes sutural widening here is an example of an elevated fracture where the fracture fragment is displaced outside the skull and it is associated with scalp laceration there is another entity called growing skull fractures which is most commonly seen in children dura arachnoid or the brain parenchyma can herniate through the fracture site and these herniated or the trapped tissues will further prevent the healing of fracture briefing about secondary effects of trauma which are cerebral edema where there will be effacement of sulcal spaces cerebral ischemia secondary to trauma this can occur because of hypoperfusion and can cause focal or global ischemia of the brain parenchyma coming to herniation syndromes any supratentorial trauma or bleed can lead to subfalcine herniation or descending transtentorial herniation any infratentorial bleed or the posterior fossa bleed can lead to ascending transtentorial herniation and tonsillar herniation Thank you this was all about CT imaging in head trauma subscribe to our youtube channel and follow our instagram handle at radiology doodles